We were just looking at um, what work is, and we defined it as, well, a force acting through a distance, and it's the amount of energy that's transferred by a force that's acting through some distance. So that means that this equation then, W, which is the work, um, equals Fs cos theta should make more sense, because work then is defined as the force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle. Um, now, let's maybe go into a little bit more detail with work. So what we can do then is we can say first of all that work done is, uh, let's see, we could say it's positive or negative or zero. So for example, you could say you could do, I'll give you an example here, so you can do uh, work against gravity. Because if you apply a force um, and you have a certain displacement, you might do work against gravity. Um, so you can do work against gravity. Gravity can do work against you. So that could be considered some sort of negative value here. So we could say that work done, I mean, we either get a positive or negative value. And then we can say then that I do work or maybe something does work against me. This comes in very handy when you're dealing with uh, thermal physics a little bit later on because what you can do, you can consider, uh, let's say that um, I have some sort of box. And in that box, what I do is I squish the things in the box. So that means that I've done work you know, against those particles. But what if those particles heat up and then they actually expand the box? Well, then you could say the box has done you know, work against its surroundings. Well, the particles have. We can also have zero work. So let's do uh, maybe a little example here. Maybe I'll give you that. So let's say we have, uh, yeah, let's say, well, first of all, uh, whoops, I forgot one thing. I actually wanted to tell you this. Work done is independent of the path. So that means, let's say I'm working against gravity. So let's say I have some sort of height here, and then let's say I take something and I raise it some certain height. Well, if I consider something where I raise it the same height, but maybe I've gone like this right here, you know, I've done some sort of weird path, turns out the work done in raising this thing from this height to this height is gonna be the same as the work done to raise it from here to here. That's as long as we're talking about the work done against gravity. Turns out if there's friction going on, well, then the path will be important because it all depends on what path you take and how much friction there is on that path. But uh, that maybe is a, a distinction here that we don't necessarily need to go into in huge detail at the moment. But work done, it's independent of the path, but what depends, uh, what's important, though, is looking at which direction it goes. So this statement right here might seem a bit confusing. Don't worry too much about it. Um, Let's just do some examples and hopefully this will help to solidify uh, things. So let's take a look at this. Maybe, maybe I am, let's say I was really strong and I'm lifting weights. I'm actually not super strong, so uh, this is something I go to the gym and sometimes I do this, but there's certainly people who can lift a lot more weights than me. But let's just say I'm lifting weights here. So here I am, um, let's see, I need to draw myself. So here I am, I'm laying on this little, you know, weight board, so to speak, and then uh, I've got my hands like this right here, and I'm holding up some sort of, some sort of big barbell. You know, so I'm holding up some weights here. And what I'm doing then is, let's say I'm lifting it straight up. So let's say this here is my F applied, I'm going to call it. Because let's say I'm applying a force going upwards on this weight here. Okay, so if I'm lifting the weights and if I'm laying down here, these are the weights. And what I do is I apply a force going upwards. Now, um, so I could say, so, as I move it upward, let's take a look then at the definition for work. Remember we defined it as work is applied force times a displacement times cos theta. See, I said it's independent of the path, and that's because it doesn't matter which, which path you take. The important thing is your total displacement. Remember, displacement means you know, the distance you know, from here to here, let's say, from your start point to your end point. In this case right here, if you notice, even if I took a weirdo path, maybe I went around in circles, as long as I start at the same place and finish at the same place as this one, the work done is actually the same.
assuming we don't have friction and other weird things. So I could say as I move it upward, uh, my displacement then, think carefully about how I'm displacing it. If I start here, I move it up here, so my displacement is, let's say it's positive. If I define positive as being up, so I could say, well, let's look at the angle here. Because we have the equation work equals f times s times cos theta. What's the angle between my applied force and my displacement? Well, in that case right here, if they're parallel to each other, the angle is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. You can do that on your calculator if you're not sure. I can just get out my calculator here, make sure I'm in degree mode, and I could say the cosine of 0. Or you could even do it if you know your graphs of cosines. But let's just look at this. Cosine of 0 is 1. So that means then that... Let's look at this then. So that means then that my work done is just going to be some positive value. So I could say my work done is going to be positive. But as I move it down, let's say, uh, displacement is negative, we could say. It all depends on how you want to define it. We could define the displacement as some negative value. Because let's say I started off, um, let's say I started off with the weight up at the top. Think carefully though about this. So here's the situation now. So here's me still laying down, and this time I'm starting off with my hands, you know, sort of extended here. And here's the bar here. So I've got my hands here with this bar in my hand. Well, this isn't actually very accurate. It should be probably straight above, but oh well. So this thing right here. Think carefully about my applied force. The applied force is still upwards. It's still up. Because if I didn't apply an upwards force, I it would just be dropping. So I think a lot of people think that in order to bring it down, I have to give it a downwards force. But I don't. All I have to do is just let go of it. And trust me, it'll go down. I don't have to push it down. I still have to give it an upwards applied force in order to keep it from falling straight down. So I'm still doing an upwards uh, applied force. But this time, I would have a downwards displacement. So my displacement then would be down. If that's the case, then I would say that the work done is negative. So I could say I've, in this case right here, I mean, you could define it like this. You could say um, that you have to do work against something. So in this case, I've done positive work against gravity. Then in this case, then, you can say that I've done negative work against gravity, or you could, you could reverse the situation and say gravity has done work against me. You know, that's, that's another way of looking at it. So just to look at an example here, if you're lifting weights, that's one way of looking at it. Um, what if I have something else? What if uh, I carry a, I don't know, um, a book? This is a really boring example, but well, I carry a book horizontally. Let's take a look at that situation. So uh, here's the book. There it is. And let's take a look then at, well, I suppose I need uh, a person holding it. So let's say this is, this is me here. Um, you can tell I'm not a good artist here. So I don't know what happened here. I guess I'm, this is a person here who's sort of leaning way back for some weird reason. And uh, so this is just a person here. So I'm carrying some sort of book. And what do I do with this book? This is the worst drawing I think I've ever done, by the way. <laughs> this is actually quite terrible. Okay, let's look at this then. In order to carry the book, um, let's look at my applied force. Which way do I have to apply a force? Now, a lot of people think, oh, if I want to carry the book horizontally, if I want to walk this way, I have to give it a force to the right. Well, no, actually I don't. I still have to give it an upwards applied force because I'm still, I'm still doing things against gravity. So in this case right here, I could say my F applied is upwards. Well, which way is my displacement? Well, if I carry it horizontally, maybe that right there is my displacement here. So if I have this right here as my displacement, okay, the force applied on this book is still straight up, but my displacement is to the right. So take a look then at what happens. Remember, work is F times S times cos theta. So you'd think, oh, well, then I have some sort of work and I could figure it out. But take a look carefully. It doesn't even matter what these values are. Look at the angle between them. The angle between the applied force and the displacement is 90 degrees. And cos 
of 90 is 0. Again, if you're not sure, you can always check it with your calculator. Cosine of 90 is 0. So if I do that, what this means then is it doesn't matter what the force was and what the displacement was. All I know then is that the work, so therefore, work done is just going to be 0. So if you carry something horizontally, you know, if you have an applied force at upwards and your displacement is to the right or to the left, you're going to have zero work done. Now, of course, it can be something in the middle. What if you, uh, you could do another situation where you have something like this. Maybe you have some sort of uh, boring book here on the ground, and maybe then you, you, know, you carry it with like a little string here. This is maybe the applied force here. If this right here is the applied force going upwards like this, but maybe you displace it, you know, I mean, if you're pulling it along the ground, it's actually going to displace this way. And in that case, then, well, it all depends on what the angle is here. So if this is theta, the angle between the applied force and the displacement, well, then you could figure out what the work done is. Then it's going to be some number between, well, zero and not zero, I suppose you could say. Um, so it all depends on what you're doing and what the numbers are.